I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice antique marquetry sewing box. Uh, you could say it's a jewelry box. I think it's a sewing box because there's a pincushion here. And it's got some interesting uh, writing on the bottom of it. Made by William King, January 1879. The master of the inner dowsing light vessel. Although the ship depicted is not a light vessel. Though interestingly, I think that the light ship at inner dowsing might have been the last manned light ship before they went, you know, fully automated ships and buoys. The problem here is veneer problems. There's a lot of lifting and bubbling uh, due most certainly to changes in humidity, a shrinking of the substrate, you know, causing the veneer to buckle. Missing pieces, although I do have a few pieces that have been saved. Bad area here. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the top and I'm going to cut uh, some MDF uh, to fit in here to protect the surface and also to give me something to clamp to. And I'll put each screw uh, right back in the hole that it came out of. 252 millimeters, 77 millimeters. Because the substrate has shrunk a bit, this piece is overlapping the other piece in the miter.
All right, well, <clears throat> while that sets up, I'll do some glue-ups on the box here. This one's a little long too. It doesn't want to fit under this top piece of veneer. I think that just snapped back into place. Put a little hot water on there, see if maybe it'll loosen that up. <laughs> that was more than I bargained for. We don't have that missing piece. Patch it later. Well, I don't think I have room for any more clamps, so uh, we'll let these dry overnight and have another round tomorrow. All right. Uh, before we get started, uh, I want to introduce you to the latest members of the household here. We're uh, raising them here in the shop because our barn is being renovated. But Ella's promised to keep an eye on them. Okay, let's see what we got.
I'm going to do the same thing I did uh, yesterday, introduce a little hot water in here. I want to loosen this. It's tight in this area. Here's the big buckle. I want to loosen this whole section so I can trim this. Good. That was that tough place right there. Just like all the other corners, it's just a just a hair too long. It's funny you don't hear much.
I was going to glue this back and then deal with this, but I can see this wood is greatly deteriorated here. I'm going to remove this and, and do a whole piece. There are a lot of different types of rosewood. I can't like just look at it and identify it. Uh, in fact, this piece from the box, for a while I thought it might even be uh, ebony. There's a lot of different types of rosewood. You can see here on your internet, all these woods are rosewoods. On this box could be Indian rosewood or this African blackwood. I even thought it could be this ebony. But what I'm seeing here with this uh, East Indian rosewood looks uh, the best to me. This stuff is brittle. Got a little piece missing in here. I want to glue up at the same time. Okay, let's see what we got here.
Now I believe we have that piece. All right, this will be pretty straightforward. I think I better do this little uh, patch I need to do first. funny this is the piece I used on the other side which is this side the back of it is so much darker and, and blacker much more like ebony and then this side is browner redder of course this patch is someone else's patch is different again let me see Put a little solvent on here, a little alcohol. It's a little darker, but this area here has got that brown color. Maybe I'll make the patch right in here. I think I need to take a little off this side and I might need to take a little off that end right there. Need to take some off there. I had to plane that one more time and now I can't get it out so I guess that's a good fit.
Okay, these clamps have been on overnight. This is my new piece of veneer, but see this corner came up short. The substrate just isn't even in that corner. This part's flapping around. This is part of the uh, bottom. All right, let's uh, let's see what we got here. Looks like I've got a loose spot here. I think I see movement. This stuff, you know, looks like it's loose. Oh yeah, there's movement right there. This is loose. And I'll have to add a little piece of veneer right there. Here you can clearly see what the problem is. And this is the problem in all these veneered pieces. These are two pieces of wood, that one and that one. Uh, this is a thin piece of wood around the edge. The main panel here of the top has shrunk and now these boards, this board is higher than that board. So that's why we got all these longitudinal cracks that I've been gluing down. I'm going to glue all this down, but it, it still doesn't fix the the real problem here, which is these boards not being lined up with each other. But there's not much we can do about that. Can't seem to get in here. Maybe it's okay. Kind of hoping maybe some glue will get in there. Okay, I think I've got uh, everything down. I can start the touch-up process. It's not unusual on a job like this, though, to come across some more loose veneer during the touch-up process. I'll start with this new piece I put in.
See, as I start to touch that tape, I know I'm really close. I had started sanding with 100, and now I'll switch to 150. All right, I've sanded this new patch with 220. Uh, it's ready for shellac, but before I do that, I want to tackle this other side. I've got to do a little bit of puttying around my patch. I need a little putty there. Maybe up here in the corner too. I've been using Famo wood for 58 years. It's never occurred to me to try any other putty. Okay, I want to give this uh, lid a good look over. I think I'm about ready to start polishing. There's an area here, I glued all this down, and there's a crack along here. And I'm going to try to uh, fill that in a bit with the uh, low heat burn-in stick. I like to give the uh, wax or burn-in stick time to cool off before I rub it off. And uh, back to the box, I've sanded out that famo wood. I need to get shellac on this new wood. A little alcohol and then lubricite. Now here's an area that was uh, heavily damaged. I glued it down. You can see here, this isn't a bubble, this is the wood underneath pushing the veneer up. I'm going to try sanding it a little bit. The polishing is going so well, I wasn't going to sand anything, but I'm going to try sanding this just to see if I can improve it a bit. I'll try it with a little 500. Feels better. You cannot sand these areas flat because the substrate isn't flat. So I'll just get it as good as I can. We'll see how it looks. That does look a lot better. It's definitely worth it to sand it. Both pieces of veneer on the ends have a lot of wrinkled, kind of wrinkly raised grain here uh, because the grain's going against the grain of the substrate. But I will try sanding it.
So the lid's going well. Now, in the meantime, I did spray another coat of shellac on this new wood off camera. Now I'm going to sand it with 320 and spray it again. On this new wood, I really want to get the grain uh, completely filled in. My little patch right there is looking good. If I can just get you know the grain all leveled off, it should disappear. And I'll come back in tonight, this evening, and uh, spray it again. All right, uh, let's see what we got here. I got to sand this down, and uh, hopefully all this graininess will get filled in. I'll start off with 320, and then I'll switch to uh, 500. I took the tape and paper off because I got to get rid of this uh, little edge of shellac right there. I've sanded this as much as I can. I mean, this side in particular is very uneven. There's not much you can do about that. I don't want to try to build up the shellac. I'm going to try polishing these sides and see if they look good, see if it'll work, come up right. I'll go over this whole surface lightly with 800. These vertical pieces are so grainy. Uh, I'll sand this uh, more, but just with 800, it seems to help. As I start to pad this side, the defects around my patch become a lot more apparent. Instead of those uh, low heat burn-in sticks that I've used so often that are some sort of hard wax, I'm going to use uh, shellac sticks, which I assume are actually made out of shellac. Boy, I still got to do more there. All right, I've sanded this entire side with uh, 800 grit, up to 800. And uh, now let's polish it. Yeah, this corner is looking so much better. Getting all the edges around my patch 
has made it virtually disappear. The last person that restored this, make, making these beautiful big patches, they were really well done, except uh, I think he might have used the wrong kind of rosewood. It's hard to tell. Sanding with the 800 seems to really help these uh, rippled areas. One of the things about sanding with 800 is you instantly find little things you miss, like this glue right here. Okay, I want to get some uh, felt on the bottom of this. It looks like the last person that laid down felt kept the glue away from the writing. I think I can do one better than that. First I need to get this glue off, clean this bottom edge up, and then scrape the, a little bit of that old felt off. very well, but it'll work. So there you have it, this really nice uh, little sewing box. Uh, we know it was built by William King in 1879, who was the master of the inn at Dowsing Light. And uh, beautiful rosewood and very good marquetry. He was a good craftsman. And of course I had some, uh, some major veneer repairs.
This is the area on the top that was so badly damaged. This is that piece that I had, you know, that came with it that I glued in. This is the left side of the sewing box. This was so badly damaged. Here's that piece that was so bad that got glued back down. And same left side in the back corner though is where I made that repair. It was really torn up and that's where I put that cute little patch. I think that's what I'm seeing right there. Once this was leveled off that patch really blended in well. And then of course this corner of the back I put an entirely new piece of veneer on. I've got about 16 hours in this job and uh, these are the tools I used. I think it looks pretty good.